Hello everybody, my name is Lurk the Relic, and today I will be reviewing the Bandai Super Mini Plus Megazord, otherwise known as Daijujin if you're not a dirty American. Now, for those of you who don't know what Mini Plus or this is, Power Rangers is a series that I grew up with where a bunch of high school cutouts are superheroes, basically. And I believe it's the same for the Japanese version Super Sentai, but I have not actually watched any of those shows yet, so I am not 100% sure yet. Now, I know this isn't a Transformers review, but I'm going to be doing a Power Rangers review this week, next week, and the week after that, because there is a 30-year anniversary movie coming out on Netflix called Power Rangers Once and Always. So I will be taking a look at two out of the three original Zords, and I, on the third week, I will be reviewing the movie, which will be very different to my usual content, I know, so please don't kill me. One last thing before I get into the review of these guys, you might notice that the setup is very different, and that's because I'm... My room's very messy, I can't record on my bed, and yes, that is where I usually record. So, going back to like I did in my first video, and we're recording on the floor. Starting off with my least favorite is the Pink Ranger, the Pterodactyl Zord. And you might notice from first looks, this looks nothing like a pterodactyl. And you might also notice it, notice, well, it can't fucking stand. I don't care. But also, there is no pink on it. Now, these, this did have stickers that made, gave it like tiny bits of pink in there and a bit on the head, but... This is the problem with pink zords. They are usually a different color with tiny highlights of pink. And another thing, you can see it has a little asshole. And you can put a, um, fucking bitch. You can put a flight stand there. Unfortunately, this set didn't come with one. And I don't have any available. Next up is the Triceratops. And from looking at it, you might notice... It's not even really a Triceratops, like, it's just a tank with a tail and a Triceratops head. It does have four rolls that are supposed to allow it to... It has four wheels that are supposed to allow it to roll, and it does, but not very well. You can also take the tail, push it up, and move these guns to give it, like, a little blaster. And I'm not going to say it every time, but I'll say it one more time. All these guys came with stickers. I did not put any of the stickers on the, it, because I think it looks fine with it, plus fuck stickers. Next up is the Mastodon, Mastodon Zord. And while I do like it, it do, you can see that the red M is not there. It's a sticker. Even though it could have easily been a separate piece, but guess, oh well. And I, the only reason I didn't have this one higher is because you can see that the head is actually a different shade than the rest of the body. And that is a common thing with the Mastazon Zord. They did that with the Sola Chagokin version. But I just would have liked if it was the same black plastic. Uh, for poseability, the legs you can't really do anything with. The uh, trunk is on one ball joint and you can move the tusks, but otherwise, it's a brick. Next up is the Yellow Ranger Sabretooth Tiger Zord, and I think this one's my favorite, at least, like, look-wise. Because they actually added details that aren't stickers, like the eyes, the nose. The nose is its own separate piece, and it was so small, but I love it. They also have these little wheels. And you can, for possibility, all the legs are on hinges. These wheels and the back wheels are on, fuck, swivels, I guess. The tail can move. The head can do like a little chicken action. And the teeth can go out. And another thing, if you want it in line with the Triceratops, you can fold its legs up. And now it looks like that, so cool, I guess. The last is the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and while this isn't my favorite Tyrannosaurus Rex, like, look, it's accurate to what they thought a T-Rex looked like back then. You can, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get into posability, ball joint, knee bend, ball joint, uh, 
tail is on a hinge. Uh, it actually has a waist swivel. The arms have a hinge right there and no head posability. So if you wanted to, you could... Oh shit, the tail came off. That is a thing with model kit. It's like that. You can't get in a more T-Rex pose. Uh, with model kits, it is going to be more fragile. It'll fall apart a bit. But that's okay because you can easily put it back together. I'm doing my best with getting them all in shot for the size comparisons, but here he is with my first review, a deluxe class Orion Pax. Last week's review, the Legacy Blitzwing in his tank mode, and a stand-in for Nemesis Prime because he's on a business trip for a few weeks, and that's the only way I'm doing these Power Rangers reviews. Hopefully he doesn't kill me when he gets back! Now there is an in-between mode from the individual zords and the megazord mode, so I'm gonna do that really quick. Triceratops is the easiest. Just fold up the tail and get this little tab flipped out. I can't get it all the way because I didn't sand it. Uh, I didn't sand it so there's a nub mark preventing it from folding in all the way, but I'm not going to get fucking sandpaper. The saber-toothed tiger, go ahead and fold the legs up like I showed you earlier. Fold the teeth up so they're pointing forward. There's no like specific like locking point or anything to so just whatever you think looks good. And then fold the tail up and also get this tab. It's a bit better because I... So yeah, that one will actually sit flush. With the T-Rex, there is a bit of parts forming, so rip the face off and the chest, and then you'll come in here. See that red thing? You'll go ahead and pull this chest piece off, and you'll see why in a second. Then you can reassemble all this, put the dinosaur legs up, and fold... I mean the arms, these are the arms, and then fold the legs up like that. And you'll get the tail out like that. Pterodactyl, just rip its legs off and fold its wings up. Mastodon, rip it, ah oh shit, rip its head off. And then let me, okay, you'll split it open like that. Pull it forward like that. Extend it so that the leg looks like that. Then you'll take one of the dinosaur feet and you'll just, or the, the pterodactyl legs and put it on like that. With the mastodon head, you'll take this uh, red piece and you'll see a tab right there. You'll just wanna push it in right there. Now you'll take the T-Rex, put the triceratops, the peg into that hole. And I'm sorry if I get this wrong, uh, saber tooth tiger in that hole and get everything lined up as best you can then you'll take the mastodon there's two tabs right back here uh, sorry two tabs in there you'll slot it in and tab it in so it looks like that take the pterodactyl there's two notches there and there and the legs, two tabs, so you'll just want to slot it in like that. Then you'll take the mastodon head, and you'll notice there's a little handle bit with a little peg, and that'll go right where that chest piece was before. And I just now realized I didn't get the trunk on after it fell off, but there's a dino tanker mode. Now, I absolutely adore this dino tanker mode, and the only reason I do is because it just captures how stupid this was in the show. It's pretty much the Megazord just sitting down. But, it's charming. For size comparisons, here he is with Orion Pax again, Blitzwing in his jet mode, and I am aware that it would have been more fitting for Blitzwing to be in his tank mode this time, but I wasn't smart enough to figure that out before I started filming. And then, Magic Square Light of Peace. Getting him into Megazord mode looks like it'd be straightforward, but there are a few steps you gotta do, such as ripping the front halves of both of these guys off, and then you can stand it up 
and you'll notice down here there are two ball joints. You wanna... I'm sorry, I'm doing my best to keep this on camera. And then there's a hole on each side that you'll wanna snap it into. Oh shit. This is why I cut up transformation sequences and then you'll push the triceratops and tiger heads forward and that's the saber tooth tiger the legs next go ahead and remove the pterodactyl the guns a mastodon head oh entire chest came off but we gotta do that anyways and the dinosaur head and yes it has parts forming but that's nothing new to power rangers so shut the fuck up go ahead and take the t-rex tail fold the tip up and then there's a peg right there that'll go into a hole on the back oh, shit and it'll look like that. Then you'll take the uh, pterodon feet and just plug them onto the bottom of the mastodon feet. Then you can fold the arms down and flip the shoulder. Ah, oh, shit. Flip the shoulder pieces out. After that, go ahead and put that piece back on and you'll actually remove the neck piece now. And you'll, where did I put it? The tie, the T-Rex head. You'll want to like stuff the neck in, then put it in the chest and then just try to get the chest pleat back on like that. It's no really good way to do it, honestly. Next with the pterodactyl, you'll fold the wings back out just to fold the head in and close those up so you can plug it right on. I removed an arm to make it easier to showcase this, but you'll want to rotate the bicep like that. Then you'll actually want to take the black and the gray and you'll want to bend it like that. And then you can flip the foot around revealing the fist. So it looks like that. And then you'll actually want to swivel it. Or actually, no, it was, I just rotated it wrong, so it looks like that. Last but not least, you'll take the, uh, the fins on the back of the head and fold them out to reveal a nice Megazord face. Now, you might be wondering where the Mastodon head goes, and if you'll notice, you'll see that the tab, also, the tab that we used earlier, has a square peg, which means you can take it and actually plug it into the hand. If I can, God, please cooperate with me. You're never, you've never been this difficult. There, and now you have the Mastodon shield. And I guess we're getting into accessories, so you can't have the Mastodon shield without the power sword. Just some gray plastic, but go ahead and slide the hilt into the hole as you would with your power sword. He looks fucking amazing! Now with this Megazord, there isn't really much molded detail outside of the chest teeth looking thing. And the head, which is actually, if my camera will focus, it's beautifully painted. I am so sorry, I cannot. I'll, I'll just put a picture up so you can actually see how it looks. Now moving on to posability, there is a swivel at the head. Shoulders can go 360. Shoulder armor. It's on its own hinge, out that far, bicep swivel, arm can bend not quite 90 degrees, wrist swivel, you can't move the waist due to the T-Rex tail being tabbed in, but if you untab it, he can swivel, a ball joint at the thigh so he can kick forward that far. Only back that far, do the T-Rex feet, and he can only go out that far. A knee swivel, knee, ball joint at the ankle, and a hinge where that ball joint is. So it can like, kind of rock forward. I don't know how well it's coming on, 
across on camera. The posability isn't amazing, but for a Megazord, it is. I don't think we've ever had a Megazord that's this posable. And another plus, he's only about six inches tall. So, he's pocket sized. Size comparison times, here he is with Orion Pax, Blitzwing, and a box with legs. Overall thoughts, I love this guy. You should absolutely get him if you're a fan of Power Rangers, and especially if you like giant robots in general. My only gripe is it was pretty expensive. I got him at Big Bad Toy Store and he was about $9,500 after shipping. Uh, but overall, I think it was worth it. I think it's kind of obvious who my next review is going to be.